It is our top story on this Wednesday. Police looking for the person who shot and killed a 15 year old girl on Monday in the Algonquin neighborhood. Dovia Purnell was shot just across the street from the Park Hill Community Center. Our Taylor Woods and photojournalist Eddie Hill explain how this loss is affecting the neighborhood. Just before 11 o'clock Monday morning in broad daylight, 15 year old Dovia Purnell was found shot and killed in the Park Hill apartment complex. This photo given to us by her family with heart wrenching. It, it is heart wrenching. Alive taken away too soon. It's heartbreaking for the Park Hill Community Center because it happened just across the street. When I hear about things like that, particularly with the proximity, I call my team. I want to check on them, see how they doing. 99 times out of 100, they know the young person. Ben Johnson, assistant director of Louisville Parks and Recreation Division, isn't here every day, but says other staff and kids at the center knew Purnell. They'll Help me to know. Remember, Mr. Ben, you were down here and she dot 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 or he and I was like, oh, yeah, I do remember. It is a miserable. It's almost like losing one of your own children. This loss is tough. The center serves as a lifeline for several young people. They depend on it, filled with activities to keep kids busy. Now some are grieving Purnell's loss. So let's think about her family. Let's think about the kids in this community. Let's think and it's because two separate groups, the kids in the community, but the kids that might have known her from the community center but she also had a school family. At the end of the day, Johnson says Purnell is another young person who wasn't in school today. Oh, so that who sat behind you in math class, that, that loss is, you know, at this point forever. Taylor Woods, WHAS 11 on your side. Purnell's family has set up a GoFundMe to help with funeral expenses. You can visit WHAS11.com for a link to donate. And LMPD says there still are no suspects at this time. Anyone with information is urged to call the anonymous tip line. That's 574-LMPD or you can use the department's online portal. A student from Western Kentucky University died following a boat crash on Lake Murray in South Carolina. 21-year-old Jonathan Bryan from Shelbyville died Tuesday morning. A WKU spokesperson said Bryan was a member of the school's bass fishing team. And our sister station in Columbia said the crash happened last Thursday on Lake Murray during a practice round for a fishing tournament. The boat Bryan was in crashed with another boat. His teammate and the others injured in the second boat are out of the hospital. The man believed to be responsible for a deadly shooting at Oscar Manor faced a judge today. His name is Ina Stovall. He's 51 years old. Metro Police arrested him Tuesday, saying he's responsible for shooting 32-year-old Daniel West at the housing complex off Ali Boulevard on January 13th. West later died at the hospital. Stovall is charged with his murder with his bond set at $125,000. He'll be back in court February 8th. You're looking at two young people, a 13 and 16 year old within two hours, two to three miles away from each other. Uh, so s Sunday was a rough day. It was a rough day for the families, it was a rough day for our deputies, other responders. The Nelson County communities mourning the loss of two teens who died within hours of one another last weekend. A vigil tomorrow night will honor both of them. Our Ian Hardwit and Emma Gefter spoke with the organizer who hopes this will help the healing process. Nelson County tragically lost two teenagers on Sunday. The first, a 13-year-old boy who was found dead in his bedroom, whose death investigation is still ongoing. And 16-year-old Lily Smith, who died on Woodlawn Road right near Freeman Avenue. Smith was in a car crash and sent to the hospital. After her death, her parents were proud to discover she made the decision to become an organ donor. Although the sheriff's department is still uncertain what happened to the young boy, no foul play is suspected. Unfortunately, Nelson County is not new to tragedy. But the good thing about Nelson County is when something tragic does happen, our community like comes together like something that you don't see in many places. Chief Deputy Brandon Bryan is behind a community vigil supporting the families of people recently lost in the county. It's planned for Thursday evening at 6.45 p.m. at the Nelson County Justice Center by the flagpoles. With a heavy heart, he took on the responsibility after another deputy opened up about the troubling time. It's common, Bryan says, for the Sheriff's Department to share the pain with families who lose the people they love. Those type of calls stay with you for your career. Uh, you don't ever forget them. 911 dispatchers feel the loss too. Sean Gaither knows he took the call when his best friend died in a car accident, but he knew he wasn't alone. The more that we show our support for one another, 
the better this community becomes. Uh, it's a great community. Nelson County is a beautiful place. It's a wonderful place to live. Those that show up will see that this community is very strong and they can get through just about anything. And they already are. On Monday, Father Matthew Hardesty held a rosary prayer for the litany of souls lost recently. In addition to the two children, two parents died in the close-knit county. But I think you see a level of care and concern following these that is making our community better. Brian is hopeful Thursday's event will do just that. You know, let's light our candles, come together as a community, you know, and just let the families know that we're here. In Bardstown, Ian Hardwick, WHAS 11, on your side. Tomorrow's vigil begins at 6.45 p.m. It'll be held outside the Nelson County Justice Center. Anyone attending should gather out front near the flagpole and candles will be provided. Right now, the ACLU of Kentucky is joining Planned Parenthood to speak on new legislation aimed at helping women's health care in the state. The group plans to unveil three new bills that look to increase and improve reproductive and, mental and maternal health care, including abortion rights. And right now, abortion is banned in Kentucky with very limited exceptions because of a state law that went into effect July of 2022. We do have a crew there covering the latest in Frankfurt, and we'll bring you that update today at 4 o'clock. Also making its way through the Kentucky legislature is a bipartisan bill aiming to expand access to paid family leave. The measure would allow employers to add voluntary paid family leave insurance, which they could choose to offer as a benefit to their employees. The length of paid leave benefits would be determined by the employer's plan. The goal is to expand that benefit to more Kentucky workers without forcing anything onto employers. The bill sailed through the House yesterday and now heads to the Senate. A Senate committee considering a bill calling for more representation for those working in the state's nail salon industry. A group of nail technicians inspired Senate Bill 14 after taking their concerns to Frankfurt last summer. They cited instances of abuse of power by the Kentucky Cosmetology Board. Multiple people have described to us instances of rogue inspectors and say the penalties following a failed inspection are unpredictable and often debilitating to their business. Yesterday, one technician addressed the importance of the state's nail industry before the committee, saying salons are successful even in areas where other businesses have not survived. If you go to every area in Kentucky, every strip mall, shopping center, there's a nail salon, at least in one of that. Even in a dying mall, there's still a nail salon that's doing good. And the Board of Cosmetology was also in attendance at yesterday's Senate committee hearing and voiced some concerns with the wording of the bill. The committee chair said a vote can be expected at next week's hearing. A quick note to those of you who often use the toll bridges. Riverlink is scheduling overnight lane closures on some of them over the week. Over the next week, all closures will be from 8 p.m. to 5 a.m. and will alternate lanes to let people pass. So the Lewis and Clark Bridge will have lane closures in both directions tonight through Thursday. The Kennedy and Lincoln Bridges will be impacted Friday through Monday. And finally, on Tuesday, the Court Avenue exit off 65 will close in Indiana. Riverlink said the closures are to perform routine maintenance on tolling equipment.